G'day! Welcome to True Blue History. I'm Adam Bloom. Today, I'm coming to you live from the town of Ypres in Belgium. And I'm joined by the chairman of the Last Post Association, Benoit Motri. And he has joined us today to talk about the history of the Last Post Association. Hi, Benoit. Thanks for joining me today. It's an absolute honour and a privilege to have you on. And I've got you on to, you're the chairman of the Last Post Association. And can you give us a little bit of history on the Last Post Association? Yes, of course. Um, so um, the aim of the Last Post Association is to continue to honour and to remember the fallen Australian guys and all the other allies who came here to Eper back in the First World War to rescue the Belgians and to help us uh, winning against the Germans. So uh, the importance is that... Um, during the war, there were approximately 250,000 casualties Commonwealth side here around Ypres in the four years of warfare. And um, at the end of the, of the um, uh, war, um, yeah, everything was destroyed here. And, uh, and after the war, in fact, Churchill, who was then Minister of War in the UK, wanted to keep Ypres in ruins, a secret place for the British race. But, okay, we citizens who came back from our places of refugees, we weren't too fond of that idea. And uh, finally, we found a solution in between. And we said, okay, we will rebuild our city on the same place, but the Commonwealth will receive a little place in the city. And that was the Menning Gate. Why Menning Gate? Because that was the gate where the soldiers, the Australians also, left the city side to go to the east to the battlefields. So um, that was a little bit the, the last point of civilization the, uh, the, the soldiers saw before going to the, to the fight. Uh, a lot of them never to come back. So um, the Menning Gate has been built, inaugurated 1927, 24th of July 1927. And then, for the first time, the last post has been sounded by six buglers of the Somerset Light Infantry. And this made such an impact on all invitees, but also on the Ypres citizens who were on the outside and who heard the sounding of the last post. And you must know that already some people were already looking for something to do to continue to honor and remember your guys. And the fact of hearing the last post at that day gave us the idea to organize ourselves to be able to do a last post, a daily last post, to remember and honor your guys. So um, uh, we organized ourselves, and uh, from the 2nd of July, 1928, we began with our daily duty. Until today, without failure, every day, except one exception, in fact, uh, during the Second World War, when Ypres was... Um, was uh, when the Germans were back in Eber for uh, for those years, we thought it was wiser to quit for a while. But as soon as Eber was liberated, we resumed our duty. When people who aren't aware, how many names are on the are recorded on the walls of uh, of the gate? Yeah, uh, you must know that of the two hundred fifty thousand casualties, um, there were approximately one hundred thousand who have no known grave. The aim was to put all the names on the gate, but unfortunately, the gate was too little. So there was only place for 54,000 names on the gate. The rest is on time cut symmetry. There's approximately 35,000 uh, names. And uh, on the Plukstedt Memorial, where there are approximately 12,000 names. Just on the, on the Menning Gate, you have 54,000 names of guys who haven't been found back or who haven't been identified. So is there most nations, are they represented on the gate and or are there some nations that have been left off the gate? Um, yes, uh, it's to say that um, you, the, the, most of the nations who fought together with the Commonwealth troops, uh, let's say uh, uh, UK, Canada... Australia, South Africa, India, 
they're all represented on the Manning Gate. You know that the Kiwis are always special guys, uh, so uh, <laughs> they wanted to be uh, to have the names as near as possible on the battlefields. So those guys are in an apps uh, in uh, in uh, in time cut symmetry on, on and on two other memorials, one in machines and and one on build symmetry. Um, but you must also know that um, uh, there are more than those. And nationalities on the gate. Uh, for example, um, there are two Japanese guys. Uh, there are uh, seven Belgians. There are eight people from Holland. There are two Danish. I mean, from everywhere in the world, you have some guys who came over. And for example, for the two Japanese, that were guys who had moved to Canada and who came over with the Canadian forces and unfortunately died here, had no known grave, and so are on the gate. So why do the Belgian people feel it's important to remember the sacrifice of all the Allied countries? What is it about the sacrifice that the Belgian people want to remember? Um, in fact, we, we, we saw in the daily last posts um, for two reasons. Um, first of all, to remember and honor your guys, b because we think it's very important not to forget all the names who fought here, who died here, whose blood uh, is in our ground. Uh, they all had family, a mother, a father, brothers, sisters, and now also some generations further. It still makes a link and a connection for guys like you to come here, to go in the footsteps and to find the, the, the family story. Eh? So I think those guys, the names of those guys must never be forgotten uh, because of what they did for us. So that's one, one reason, the big reason. A second reason is that um, we think it's important to remember and to honor and to continue to remember this, to give, to try to give a lesson at the new generations. And maybe to be able to show that going to war, going to fight is not really the, the way to find solutions. It's better to sit around the table and to have some discussions instead of taking the guns. Um, so. Of course, we see, and, and certainly today with, with, with uh, the, the, the Russians in, in, in Ukraine, um, we see that the politicians don't understand what we want to bring. But we want to continue, and we've had different politicians from all over the world, that are, or men in gate, uh, and so. But yet there are still people who don't uh, understand. And, but we think it's important to continue to give the lesson through the, 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 the lessons um, of selflessness, of, uh, of, of uh, courage, of sacrifice to the new generation, because it's something, uh, some percentage on the rest don't understand yet. And I think what you've said is really, like when I've come over, I've come over all, like I've been over, this is my fourth time over here and, Every time I come over, there's a new, it's a pilgrimage and it's not just to see my relatives that I've lost in the war. It's also, I'm completing a pilgrimage for so many Australian families who don't, who may never get over here and, and, and as an Australian coming as one to just honour the men and just, just know that their sacrifice, they are remembered in our, in our country as well. And, and I think it's really important what you touch on is that remembrance is, in my eyes, when I come to IPA, it's like visiting an old friend and you, you, the Belgian people are just, you, you're so welcoming, you're so kind and you love the Australians coming, you like everyone coming from all, every nation around the world and I think I think you get it. You just understand remembrance. Yeah. What what uh, you, uh, we found also we, we find special is that uh, it has been 100 years ago. It was a place of war. Everyone fought with each other, 
And now our daily ceremony at 8 o'clock in the evening brings together yeah, a lot of people like you've seen yesterday, more than a thousand people, uh, normal days, five, six, seven hundred. Um, and those people come from all over the world. So in, in a little city like Ypres, we bring back a little bit all the different countries together. But instead of in, 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 in war, we bring them together in peace and everyone chats with e each other and, 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 and it's, it's, it's fun and it's, it's interesting and it's, uh, we try to, to uh, while we have them all together, to bring them together and, and to, 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 to learn from each other and, and go further in the future. Absolutely. And I think it's, it's a sign we're not, and you, you know this too, we're not, we're not celebrating war we're commemorating and, and we're remembering. We're remembering the sacrifice. That's it. Uh, that's also the aim of the last post association. We're not a war movement. We're not an anti-war movement. We're a, 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 an organization to remember the soldiers, the fallen soldiers, and that's what we stand for. So if you can, just you, you just elaborated on it then and talking about 8 o'clock, we come together and the the last post is played but so what happens like obviously the menning gate is a is a road that runs into yeah. the city so can yeah. you can you briefly explain to people who haven't been here what actually happens uh in fact um uh, there, there's a lot of symbolism around eh? so um at 7 13 police comes they stop the traffic symbolically eber stops the daily life we go back in thoughts to the first world war then we sound the attention to have the silence under Menengate. Last posts to honor and to remember the fallen, follow, uh, followed by the exhortation or the oath, uh, they shall grow not old as with the left grow old, and so on. Um, then we have one min minute of silence um, where we can reflect on the names we see on the wall, uh, on the families we know. Uh, also on what we did uh, in the battlefield tour of the day. Eh? Um, it gives the people uh, a moment to reflect. Uh, then sometimes people come with a read. They can lay the read after the minute silence. We have sometimes people from regiments, uh, families, uh, whatever, uh, who, who come over. Um, and um, um, at the end, we sound the valley. Uh, the valley um, uh, to uh, to closure the, the the ceremony, and then traffic goes through again, and we're away for another day. Um, we use the bugle, who is a, a, what is a very difficult instrument. It's not like a trumpet with uh, and that you can use the the, the, the fingers, but um, we use this because. Um, it has been used during the First World War, so it's a typical sound of, of the, the, the same as for uh, during the First World War, for uh, beginning of the day, end of the day, to, to um, bury the soldiers and so on. Um, also, um, uh, for example, um, the place is very symbolically, like I al already uh, told you. Um, and um, the last post was, in fact, the last call of the day to get the soldiers in bed. For here, it means um, the end of the daily life of the soldiers who found their, uh, their death here. Um, and the valley was, in fact, the first call of the day. But here it means the beginning of the eternal life of the soldiers. So behind everything, there's a, a, a symbolism. So during the centenary of the Great War, did you? It seemed like I came here throughout the centenary, and it seemed like there was just thousands upon thousands of people coming through. What did the centenary period mean to the association, and what was there a was there a symbolic service that you can remember during that period that you are fond of? Yeah, we had uh, a lot of special ceremonies, of course. Um, but for us, the first thing for who we do it is for the soldiers who are on, on, on the wall. So 
if there are 10 people in the evening or there are 1,000 or 2,000 people, it doesn't make a difference or shouldn't make a difference. Eh? Of course, um, uh, we, we, like we had a lot of special ceremonies, we also, we, we are all volunteers, you must know, so we all work during the day, so we try to organize a professionally ceremony uh, that seems professional although we're not professional <laughs> so um, we're we had to organize us a little bit in another way because of all the crowds coming over so we had uh, ceremonial assistance for under the gate to keep the order in the gate we had uh, uh, we have six buglers we have uh, two two pipers um, a, com um, a board um, of which Always one or two are there every evening, so uh, okay, it, it, it gave us a little bit of work, but okay, we the fact um, to see um, not only the crowned heads which we had uh, and the ministers and and presidents and so on, but but the most rewarding is uh, the people who come over, for example, from Australia or from uh, New Zealand or, or elsewhere who come for the first time, who come with a wreath in honor of the fallen soldier who was then <coughs> at that day 100 years, just uh, died just 100 years ago, was very emotional both for the families and for us, uh, the stories we heard. Uh, and uh, it was very nice to hear and for the buglers also to, to have sort of recognition, uh, sort of... Uh, uh, people who come afterwards to thank us for what we do and uh, that gives us the power to continue well I, I must say the the point that you touched on where you're all volunteers and you make it look professional it is a professional run the way you do it is it, it's it's like it works like clockwork and it, it's like to military precision everything is just Free flowing, it works, and it, it it's a credit to you. So well done. Yeah, thank you, thank you. But okay, after uh, thirty two thousand six hundred and fifty <laughs> times, uh, it should it should go a little bit, of course. But okay, it it, it takes a lot of our leisure time or free time, uh, but uh, it's it's also a time you spend uh, and a rewarding time because of, of what you do, or for who you do it, and, and the recognition we receive afterwards. So f for y yourself, did you have a an interest? Obviously, you've grown up in Ypres, and, it, and it's a... In Belgium, you've been surrounded by, the, you know, your city was absolutely destroyed from the First World War. So did you have an interest in the First World War, or how did you get into the role that you're in now? Uh, you must know that uh, the 24th of July, 1927, one of the guys, one of the spectators was my great granddad oh, and wow. he was one of the um, initiative takers of uh, the uh, to found the last post association back in that time so it has always been a little bit with our family and we've always been very interested uh, for example my uh, my uh, granddad uh, was wounded went into a field hospital, met my grandmother over there. So, okay, we're, we have a lot, a lot uh, of connections with the First World War. So, as a little child, you're born in, in, you're, you're in, a, in a family who has already interest in First World War. You come to the Menin Gate, you meet the, 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 still the veterans at that time, you meet a lot of people, you speak about war, you begin to read about it, and you're all into it. And so I got uh, into the association, and after a few years, then they ask to be chairman, and then you say yes, and afterwards you see, oh, <laughs> that is a lot more work than what you thought. But okay, we, we, we like to do it. So for what does remembrance into the future look like from your perspective going forward into as we it was we're now past the centenary of, of world war one what does it look like from your perspective going forward uh it will not change for uh for a centimeter um uh, it will remain the same uh it is in our uh statutes in the Founding of the last post back in 1932, we wrote our uh, our statutes, 
and the aim of the last boost association is to continue into eternity what we uh, what we do until now but we will continue in the same line we try to be financially independent so that they cannot push us to left or right we keep our line we were we are there for the soldiers and that's it and everyone can think about what uh, about the war whatever they like in the minute of silence we don't push the people to 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 go for one or, or the other id uh, behind one or the other id so um we we try to be independent and and try to be there with the, the the line that is important for us is to remember and honor the fallen soldiers that's what we stand for so you've got the centenary of the the gate coming up in 1927 is there a is there a future celebration like a, a big service coming up and and what plans are for the gate is there anything that's happening to the gate um, um yeah they, they, they will uh, do a lot of works at the gate before 1927, that's a Commonwealth War Graves Commission, of course. Uh, and then we will be involved for the centenary uh, as Last Post Association. So we're often together with the City of Ypres, War Graves Commission and Last Post. Uh, and of course, the big day for us will be the 2nd of July, 19, uh, 2028, uh, the 100 years of the Last Post. And of course, you're right, as you said, the 1927 it was un unveiled and then 1928, oh sorry, it was built in 1927 and as you said in 1928 the first Last Post. So how many Last Post services have actually ca have have happened since the in first? Uh, uh, approximately now we are, uh, are around uh, 32,560 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You can see that on our website. Uh, every day we uh, we add one. It's it's amazing. Like that is just it's absolutely like to and I, it was still when we were in COVID and so. Was that a challenging time? And, and yes, of course. And yeah, how yeah, did that yeah. go? Yeah, that was. Uh, we 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 had to stop our uh, our daily event because all events couldn't continue in Belgium, so we didn't want to stop, uh, and we had to go up uh, with the help of our the mayor of Ypres. We went until uh, the the prime minister of Belgium to have an exemption, and we continued. We could continue, only one bugler. No people under the gate. And we did that for three months. Only one bugler and only the names. And it was a fantastic uh, uh, image, of course, um, that has been uh, um, yeah, on, on different media, I think. Maybe you've seen it or not. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was a fantastic image. But, but we were very proud that we were able to continue because it's a tradition and tradition needs to be continued and uh, we we did all we could and we succeeded and uh, yeah we're very proud of that and i and I, th I think for you what's what's so pleasing to see again is crowds are back now and and they're back in in big numbers and as you said last night i i was with i was there and i laid a reef on behalf of my family and the tour group i'm over with and it was amazing and as you said to me there was 1000 people there and it it was amazing like it was a really uh, and I was there the night before and it wasn't as busy, but it was still busy. And it's it's great to see that people yeah. are coming back. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, It's always, for the, the buglers and for myself, it's always nicer if we have people around to have a chat afterwards. And so so um, uh, it's nice to have the people back, back there. But as I said before, we do it not for the people. We don't want. We know we are a tourist attraction, but we don't want to be a tourist attraction. We're there to remember, we're uh, and to honor. Um, that's and if people come over, and if it aren't pilgrims but tourist guys, maybe after thinking a little bit through the ceremony, and so maybe they can become pilgrims, and that's that. That's very good. So. How do you want future generations to remember the sacrifice of the men and women who have died and given their all to and the supreme sacrifice, not only in in Belgium but uh, of of the First World War? How do you, how do you want to see the future generations remember? I think we wouldn't we shouldn't 
changed the way of of remember of, of remembering the guys. I think this way is good. A last post, a minute of silence, uh, a reflection. I think you don't have to change good teams or good ceremonies or a good a good way to remember. And I think it's it's poignant. It's short. It's 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 all what it has to be. So we need to continue like we we did from the beginning on, and and we're committed to do that. So how how can Australians donate to the Last Post Association, and and how can they get involved if they want to? Uh, we have a Last Post uh, Association website, uh, lastpost.be, be from Belgium. Uh, and there you can become member of the association, yearly member, uh, you can do a gift, or you can become a um, um, uh, lifetime member. Um, so that helps us to meet the costs and to continue uh, the ceremony and our duty uh, we, we took upon us. So that would be very helpful and uh, we're very grateful for that. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you for coming on True Blue History and just giving us a background of of the last post association and, and the, the last post that happens at 8 o'clock every night. And I just want to thank you so much for giving up your time to come on True Blue History. Uh, no, no, it's a, it's a great pleasure. Always welcome. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review for the podcast on whatever platform you get your podcasts. And if you feel like supporting us, you can now via our Patreon page. That's patreon.com forward slash true blue history or buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash true blue history and check out our new website, true blue history dot com for more great content.